What's up guys, let's talk swing trading and the indicators that I use. We'll look at a trade that I just did five days. I was inside this trade, I returned 42% on my investment. We'll look at some stocks that I'm kind of using these indicators to look at as we come into this month of January that you can look at yourself. And overall, just talk about how indicators can help you be a better investor. Now I know there's this taboo of whenever you see technical indicator charts, you think of day trading and blowing up your money and losing your accounts. And the reason I know that you feel that way is because when I used to look at technical analysis charts before I knew what I was doing, I felt the exact same way. So I sympathize, I'm with you. So if you're new to this, try and eliminate that whole gambler's mentality and that whole day trading mentality out of your mind and look at how you can use this in a very, very conservative ways. The reason I like this more than day trading, well, number one, time is on our side. We're gonna be looking at long-term charts and trends and the longer time data we can use, the more reliable it could be. Not more accurate per se, but the more reliable it could be. This is way less work than day trading. I feel, I feel like day trading, you really, really need to focus day and night on what's happening in the markets. This is something that I'm doing with a nine to five job, a YouTube channel, a full-time discord, all my options plays. This is something that I just added as an extra. So I think it's very, very manageable for somebody that doesn't have the time to necessarily day trade. And also too, you could do this with really blue chip stocks. Stocks have been around forever. You'll see the examples that I'm gonna use. This is not penny stocks. These are not risk stocks, uh, YOLO bets, Wall Street bet stocks. These are reliable companies that you'd probably invest long-term in. So if we can use some of these strategies and some of these indicators, we really might be setting ourselves up for success. Before we dive into it, guys, I know this is new content for my channel. I haven't really talked technical analysis that much, so if you do enjoy it at the end of the video, please just remember to give it a thumbs up so the algorithm knows I'm making this content. It also lets me know that you want me to do more of this content in the future. Now, there is kind of an elephant in the room or something that I want to say before we start this, guys. There are so many different types of indicators. There are so many different types of indicators that you can pair with other indicators, and every single trader has the best way, right? Traders hold their indicators like really close to their chest. They rub it and they caress it. It's, it's almost creepy. So I can guarantee you that if you're already trading, you're gonna hate this method. You're gonna hate these indicators. I'm gonna be the biggest donkey in the world. Brad Finn, the donkey, what is he talking about, right? And if you are new to trading and you ask another trader, they're gonna tell you why their indicators and their indicator combination is the best in the world. From what I've learned so far, guys, it's all about risk management that helps you survive. Living to the next day, being able to trade the next trade, which is what's gonna keep you successful and keep you in this game and make you successful. It doesn't really matter so much on the indicators themselves. I chose these two, frankly, because they're very simple to understand. They were very, very easy to use in a pair. They're very, very common. And all I wanted to do is get my feet wet and learn about them. Will my indicators change over time, maybe? Most likely, who knows? But I'm having success with it now. So it's more about finding the things that work for you and then excelling at them and learning as much about them as you can and not following what other people do. We always talk about this like, don't follow options traders and don't follow what other, you really need to come up with your own way to do this. All right guys, so here is my setup inside Weeble and I gotta tell you guys, I used to just tell you about Weeble for the free stocks, but now that I've been using them for a couple of months, they're really good. So if you don't have a Weeble account, like, yeah, I'm gonna tell you about the free stocks, but if you're thinking about getting into trading, guys, I found Weeble to be pretty superior right now and the change they're making. Anyway, that's a horse of a different completely color, but like, I've loved it so far. This is kind of what I look at. So first, let's talk about these red and green candles for people that have no idea what that is. What these green and red candles represent is time, okay? Now these time intervals can be set and we see along the bottom, I can set them to different intervals, meaning right now it's set on one day. So each one of these candles represents one whole day of price action. The bottom of the thick part is where it opened. The top of the thick part is where it closed if it is green. If it is red, we'll have the open be at the top and the close be at the bottom. And then these little tiny wicks that come off of the candles or action that happened in between. So like, for example, it might've closed right here at 35.45, but it shot up at some point during the day all the way up to 357.67. 
So the first thing that I'm really gonna think about is I'm going to be wondering, what should I set my interval for, right? What should the time frame be? Now for this, for swing trading, where we're gonna be trading from one to five days up to even two weeks, I like to use the day, the one day chart, and I also look to look at the four hour chart as well. So this is the difference between, and we could just zoom out, this is Facebook or Meta, okay? So this is what the four hour chart looks like, and here's what the one day chart looks like. And we could see this gives me a ton of data on the one day timeline. I can take this and look all the way back into 2019. Now, whether you like technical analysis or not, you can't help but to look at this graph and see a certain amount of trends or things that look like they repeat themselves or at least some consistencies. And that's really what we're gonna be looking at. The first is this yellow line that comes up through the middle. This is what we call the moving average or the simple moving average. And all it is is an average of a previous amount of time set to whatever you want. Like I said, this is gonna be a lot of personal preference here. This for me is 180 days. So if this candle is, one, is a day candle, that means that this line is represented by the average of the last 180 days. Guys, it's just a trend indicator. We see that this is going up, this is going up, this is going up, and this is going up. The next one that I have on there is a 30 day exponential moving average, very similar to the simple moving average, but with the exponential average, it's going to take the newer data and weigh it more. So it kind of gives like a little bit more of a real time feel. So if we look at this, the first thing I'm gonna start to think to myself is okay, over the last 180 days, this stock is moving in an upward trend. It's bullish, okay? We can see this yellow line goes up and up and up. And we also see that this blue line is doing pretty much the exact same thing. Kind of lags behind a little bit. It's a little bit more right on the action. If we zoom in, okay, it moves a little bit more, but it's also in an upward trend and it's also staying above the 180 day average. So I have 180 days and then I'm looking also at 30, a smaller time frame, with a little bit more weight towards the newer data. So the first things I'm really gonna look at with these pair in conjunction is, is the simple moving average moving up? Check, bullish, I think it's gonna go up. And is the exponential moving average above that, staying above it? If it's staying above, then I'm pretty sure that this is both in bullish kind of formation. So I, it's safe to say that it's probably gonna continue along that path. I'm very, very, gonna, I'm very, very rarely gonna trade on a stock where the exponential moving average is below the simple moving average if I think that the stock is bullish. And the next thing I see is that this yellow line, this moving average, is really acting as a little bit of a support. And when I say support, that means the stock price comes down and it touches this support and then it bounces back. And it comes back down, it reverses, pulls back, it hits the support and then it bounces right back up. Now here, it does not do this, guys. This was COVID, right? This was March 18th, 2020. So that a little bit of an outlier. And that's something that we really need to talk about when we talk, when we talk about indicators. They don't predict the future, right? They are representations of what's happening now and in the past. So they never could have predicted COVID. That's why you really, when we use these indicators, we have to know it's now and the past. They don't make future price predictions. That's up to you to make. But after COVID, it came down, pretty much touched the yellow line here. Climb, 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 recover, or clever, came back down. Had a little bit more time around the simple moving average, okay? But then once again, bounce back up, bounce back up to highs of like 384. Now it's pulled back and it's hanging out right again at that 180 day moving average. So you're thinking what I'm thinking, I'm thinking to myself, okay, well, if it's come down and got support, what's it most likely gonna do? Is it most likely gonna downtrend? Or after seeing all of this since March of 2020, is it gonna bounce and come back up? Consolidate, bounce and come back up. We would assume it's gonna come back up. We don't know if it's going to, and we're probably gonna wait for confirmation, but I think it's safe to say from looking at the history, it's more likely to go up than go down. So after I get those trends of upwards and the EMA as well going up, the next thing that I look at is the relative strength index or the RSI. Now, like I said, I know people are gonna get the comments, why not the stochastic RSI? Why not stochastic indicator? Like I said, guys, there's so many. This was just the first one that I wanted to use. 
I had read that the stochastic is really just a derivative of this. So it's using this data. So why not start at the beginning? That was just my frame of reference. And guys, I use this on a default setting. There's different types of periods, just like with the candles. I use the 14 day period when I'm looking at the RSI. And this RSI, it comes from a scale of zero up to 100. And we could see it kind of bounces around. It's a momentum indicator. What is the momentum really doing here? But the thing that it tells us with this band up 70 right here is this yellow line. And then down here is 30. So what this 70 and 30 band, what they do is they tell me if something's overbought. So if I've overbought something, it's probably a little overvalued and there's more of a likelihood for it to pull back. It also tells me if something's oversold or undervalued, which if I'm under, if I'm oversold, that means there's probably going to be more buyers and I'm probably going to go up to the bullish direction. That's what these bands represent. And when I'm above 70, that's a representation of overbought or overvalued. And we like to think that the trend to follow that is most likely going to be a pullback. Then down here by the 30 range, we see that's oversold. It's dropped below 30. And if I'm oversold, I'm more likely going to get some more buyers and we're going to see something in the bullish direction. So as I scan this chart, I'm looking for periods where this is overbought above 70 here, 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 here. It goes pretty much from overbought, oversold, overbought, oversold, and it bounces in between each one. Okay. So what I want to see if I am bullish, I want to see something that is oversold. If I've oversold it, that means there's going to be buyers. So I like to look down in the 30 range. I'm looking for stocks that are down in this 30 range of the RSI. Now, as far as the calculation for this, guys, Weeble's going to do it for you. Your brokerage is going to do it for you. You can look up the equation. I personally don't know it off the top of my head. So don't. this video is not going to bore you with how it's calculated, just more how to use it. How can we look and see if something is bullish or bearish in sentiment? And there's also advanced ways to use the RSI, things I'm learning now, like RSI divergence, where the RSI trend is different than the stock trend. That's usually a sign of a reversal of some sort. So those are things that you can add on to your knowledge as you continue to learn about RSI. So the last one, before we look at the stocks that I'm looking at, my watch list and stuff like that, let's talk about the MACD, which is also used in a default setting and very, very common. You can also use this RSI and MACD in platforms, even like Robinhood, if, if that's what you're using, but I wouldn't recommend it, but you can look and see this exact chart in other brokerages that you're using. On the MACD, there's pretty much three things we're gonna be looking at. One is the more smooth line in blue here, that's called the signal line. The orange line here is gonna be the MACD line, and then the histogram here shows you how far apart the signal and the MACD line are to one another. And if it's in a downward trend, this would be shown in red. And this is an upward trend, this would be shown in green. So we can use this red and green to see when the MACD line crosses over the signal line, either in an upward momentum or a downward momentum kind of trend. It's a little smoother than the RSI and it usually lags. And I like to use this last as confirmation on all the other things that I've been thinking about inside my head. I'm gonna be looking and waiting for the MACD line to cross above the signal line in an upwards bullish direction in coordinates with all the other things I saw. The MACD is really the last thing that I look at. It's really the last thing, the box that I check last before I'm like, all right, let's go in and make that trade. And we see it climbs up. And then there's also times where the signal line in orange crosses back down and crosses in a downward direction over the signal line, which would show a bearish position. Let's look at how I used this last week with this stock, Facebook. So we've already talked about how this is bullish in nature. The 180 day simple moving average is up. The EMA is above that moving average. So now we can kind of zoom in to where we're at right now. I made this trade on December 23rd. All right, so here was December 23rd, just a couple of days ago, and the thought process that went into making this trade. Guys, now I trade options. I do not trade stocks, really. So this was all going to be done with an options play, but here was my thought process. I looked back and I saw this thing is a little oversold back here on December 23rd, and we could see that happens to be at a pretty low point. So I thought to myself, all right, well, let's see what it's been doing. Can I try and catch on to this wave, which really isn't the best thing to do? but it can be done as we see right th right here, especially with short-term option plays. I looked and I waited for the MACD line to cross above the signal line. I said, okay, well, it has done that, so that's a good thing. The RSI was at 51, fair value. 
that MACD was still in an upward trend and this stock Facebook over time has been an upward trend. And if anything, it's looking to bounce off the simple 180 day moving average. So now this happened to be right before Christmas. So this was the 23rd. The next trading day was actually the 27th and we had a re Facebook had a really, really good day. It opened at 339.13 and it closed at 346, up almost $7. And what that did was cause the, the option to go up considerably. And I probably got a little bit trigger shy. I probably got a little too excited. This call was a little bit longer term. It expired in a couple months, but I'm not one to be greedy. So when this thing was returning me 30, 40, 50%, I said to myself, and I said inside the Discord, depending on what happens when this opens up on the 28th, I might get out of it. And what I saw on the 28th was that the RSI flattened out. So that momentum kind of slowed down. The MACD was still climbing. And then we saw a little bit of a red day, which was probably a little bit of a comeback off this huge day after Christmas. But I was like, I'll take it. I'll take 42%. I'm getting the hell out of here. I'm making my 800 bucks or whatever it was. And that was okay. Because if I would have stayed greedy, maybe this thing is going to reverse back. You never know. I am not, I don't have a problem being paper hands. I took my 40%, I took my 800 bucks and I will get back into Facebook if these things continue to show trend. But right now I'm really looking at some other things, some other stocks. So let me show you how this plays out with other things inside my watch list and then I'll get you out of here. Now the screen did change a little bit guys because I wanted to show you guys my watch list. This is another, this is the main screen that I use. I set that one up for the video so it's a little bigger. On this one I will say a little confusing, sorry. The signal line on this one's yellow and my MACD line is blue. So it's kind of the reverse of what you just saw. But the first one I want to take a look at, let's scroll down here and look at Etsy. Okay, let's look at Etsy on the one day timeline. Kind of looks a, a little similar to what we've been seeing, what we just saw with Facebook, okay? So what we have back here, when the EMA crossed over the symbol moving average, that was in April of 2020. And since then, Etsy has gone up and up and up. And that's been, that's been really, really good news. If you were an investor here and saw that, you would have seen this period of oversold. So let's buy this thing. And you would have seen the, the uh, MACD line cross over the signal. And you would probably be riding this for a really, really long time. Probably hard to stay in it the entire time. But then we had a little bit of correction back to the 180 day. Then it shot up again and it reached highs of 307.75. And it's pulled back a bunch and now it's kind of consolidating around this EMA. And Ricky Gutierrez, who's really smart, taught me a lot about this, talks about the three stages of a reversal. We have the pullback, then we have the consolidation, and then we have that reversal. But we have to wait for that confirmation of reversal. And if you look down here, what we have is the MACD line wanting to cross over the signal line, it wants to do it. And also we have this oversold. It's pretty much down on the 40, it's, it's right there. It really got down there here, but it's staying pretty close right now to oversold. So that means there's a likelihood that this thing really does want to reverse. So I'm not in a trade on Etsy right now, but I'll tell you this, if the share price itself happens to get back up above this EMA and this EMA starts to bend and trend upward, there's a very, very good chance that I will open an options play long on this. And if we take a quick look at the trend line, like let's see this bounces back and gets to maybe here, and it comes all the way from there, all the way back to even the all-time highs where it was, we're looking at something like a 23% return possibly over that time frame of this has this is 56 days. Here would be a little short, probably a month. So if you want to hold this for maybe three month options contract, there's a chance here that if this thing does uh, reverse and show some confirmation that we can make a little bit of money here. Target, we're seeing very, very similar patterns. Here's March, 2020. Since then, Target's been up. It's come back down, almost hit the simple moving average, recovered, came back down. Now we're a little bit below it. And we see right down here, 25. Okay, so this right now, pretty oversold. We have the MACD line just crossing over the single line. Once it crosses above that signal, I put in a long call. I said this is in Robinhood because I'm making trades in Robinhood as well. So you can leave notes here and Weeble to yourself. You can make alerts. It's awesome because I'm using this chart, but I'm trading over there. Once this thing crosses above, if this gets above the 
uh, symbol moving average and this EMA really turns up, I'm probably gonna add a couple more contracts to this position because these numbers right down here are even better than what we just saw a second ago with Etsy, which is why I have one and I'm ready to put my foot on the gas if I really need to. Netflix, more of the same guys using that moving average as support. And we see that it uses the EMA as support as well. Look at this, support, support, support all the way up. So once again, if I can get that share price above that, we are in a period right now where we're oversold. MACD is crossing by the signal. That's another one that I'm gonna be looking at. Also too, you gotta to look at CRM because you know Nancy Pelosi's in. She's the greatest trader of all time. So kind of like, this would be like a more meme one. I'm just kind of watching it to watch Nancy Pelosi get rich off of insider trading. I'm not saying that she does that, but there's a pretty good chance she does. So I'm looking at that. I have that on my watch list as well. And what, what else do I have on here? I have SoFi on here. Let's take a look at SoFi. Like SoFi, look, I even drew in a little bit of a support line over history at 1358. It's right there bouncing. I will wait and see if this once again gets above we have coming out of the nice RSI, MACD, all these similar trends, guys, that we're seeing over and over again. This chart looks very, very similar to JJ Buckner's favorite Palantir, I'll top on Palantir. And we can see Palantir is just stays in this little bit of a zone right here, but look where it is right now. Right now it is oversold, MACD crossing the signal, down around historical support levels. This has a pretty good chance that it could come back to at least 28.09, over time because that's what's done in the past. So we don't know, these These are just indicators, guys. These are to help us with our gut feeling. This thing could crumble down to $1. So, you know, do your own due diligence and remember that this video was recorded and edited way before you're gonna see it, probably a week or so. But use these things, check it out. And if you wanna see what I'm doing with these in real time, guys, hop inside the Discord. I'm posting all my trades over there. We're talking technical analysis. I'm getting a lot of the things from my watch list from inside that channel. So guys, thank you in the Discord. We're, we're a wolf pack going out and hunting together. So it's a really good community in there, guys, if you wanna be a member of the Discord channel. But that's really it, guys. If you have any questions or you wanna see follow-up videos or there was something that I talked about in here that you want to see more in detail, I know this got drawn out a little longer than it should have, but I think it's important for people to understand. If you did get some value, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Until I see you guys in the next one, stay positive. Work really, really hard always, please. Be kind to other people. Hope you have yourself an amazing day and even better tomorrow. Happy New Year.